We, uh, so BBC Worldwide Productions, we're based in LA. We had read the book, Jane Tranter, the other executive producer on the show, and myself, when we were in the UK. We had wanted to develop it for a long time, and the rights became available to us, and we approached Glenn Morgan. And he said, no. <laughs> no, they gave me the book. And, um, you know, it's then, you know, you, go, you get a meeting and you go, here's a graphic novel, we really want you to do it. And you go home and you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, a month later they go, have you read it? Oh, no. Uh, this one, I, I read that night, I think. And I went back and I'm like, we're doing the novel. It wasn't a jumping off point or here's a, this is a good start. We go, no, this book is great. And um, that's how we proceeded. Great. How did you know who you wanted to cast and how did you get them involved in the project? Uh, I had wanted to work with John Sim again for a, a long time. We'd worked together on Life on Mars and Doctor Who. <laughs> oh, you guys Hill. are like the same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and Jane Trant had worked with him on State of Play, and we we were just hungry for an opportunity to do that. And I I saw him in London. We talked about the book. He read the book. He it came at a time where we were really lucky. He was I would like to say he was available. He wasn't really available. He was half available. He was shooting the second season of The Village, so we needed to share him with their schedule. So he did a lot of transatlantic travel between the two shows, but um, it was a dream come true to have him back, back in my life. They're nodding again. <laughs> How was it adapting the book? So is, is the whole show, is it like in sections, or did you just kind of spin off from it and base it on that? I, basically, the, our first four episodes is, you know, three quarters of the book. Mm -hmm. And then we found that we, were, we needed to move things up. Um, you know, the cast is so great that John and, and Millie, they bring other things to mind. And you go, well, you know, we should be maybe talking about this, or here's a more interesting or different point. And, um, you know, we, Michael Marshall Smith wrote the novel, and these guys had, had a relationship with him, and he came down, and uh, Kristen and my brother Darren and I, we all wrote, so you could talk to him. What were you thinking here? What were you thinking here? Well, we're going to go do this. And he's like, he was so supportive and, you know, and very helpful. Mm. So, sorry, go ahead. Would, the, would you say the characters in Intruders follow closely the characters in the book? Are there any departures? I think I think you're quite faithful to the book. Uh, the only, the, the Richard, the James Frain's character was an older man. Mm. He was very, like, but James, uh, and that's what I was kind of, out of my head. And then we fell in love with him. Yeah, no, he can, they, what can we say? He came he into audition, amazing. and while he's auditioned, you're like, everything's changing. <laughs> yeah. you know, I that guy. Yeah. <laughs> we shifted very quickly. <laughs> but everybody else is pretty, I think, pretty consistent with the book. Yeah. When you guys were on set and filming, was there anything on the page that either didn't translate or was so different from what you had imagined? <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's in any show. Yeah. You know, and then you go, oh, I can't wait to watch this. I can't wait to shoot this. And then you put it all together and you go, eh. Well, I didn't really, that's, well, I thought it was going to turn out different. And then other things you, you know. It's the strangest thing yeah. in my job, which I've, I've, I've done for about 15 years, is is you you work with the writer on the script and you fight and you fight and you fight to keep certain scenes in that are critical, that you know, you know story-wise they've got to be there. And then you see the edit and you realise there's a, it's taken on a life of its own and something that, it's, you know, when it was on paper, you think you've got to, you die not to have that scene. And then you see the whole piece put together and it's like some kind of crazy alchemy that the filming, just something about it, whether it's the actors bringing a role to life or the way the directors realise, you know, a segue between scenes, you suddenly realise actually that information you thought you needed is already being covered. So I love, I love the process of working from a novel to a script to the edit because every, every part is different, isn't it? And what you think you're fighting for, it, it changes, it evolves at each stage. Speaking of directors, were you going for a certain look and in that did you decide what you were looking for in a director? Yes, we wanted we wanted intruders to feel very grounded. I mean we 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 wanted it to feel like a psychological thriller 
quite paranormal, quite you know, conspiratorial, and we wanted it to feel very much of the world. So it's we don't have many set builds, for example, you know, very, very, very few, a couple of swing sets. We're at in on locations in Vancouver. We're using real houses, real locations, and and that was very important to us. We wanted it to feel quite grounded and recognisable. Does that com- come with complications being on location instead of like building it exactly how you, how you want it? It's yeah, it does. I mean, I coming from the UK, we we mostly use locations over over set built on, on on the majority of the time, but it does come with complications. Not least, it snowed on the first the first week we were there, and we were filming from February to June, and you need some consistency, and you know you're not filming all your scenes in that one week, and it was three feet of snow it was really unexpected. Yeah, we had a scene with Millie and James on the beach. Mm. He was on the beach. I didn't even pay attention to the background trees. Mm. We had to go back to get a couple shots. Yeah. A month later, and it's like it it's, doesn't yeah. even. You're on the same exact spot, and it doesn't match because it's just you know all the leaves that come in and stuff. You know, but Plus that didn't stop freezing us. Freezing out there when it's not supposed to be. In. Oh yes. <laughs> did you guys have any say in who you picked for the cinematographer, or did the director do that, or you collaborate? Yeah, I had worked with um, this guy Phil Lindsay. Had, um, I had worked on it, he did some uh, additional footage on a movie that I made, and then we did this show for Cartoon Network of live action called Tower Prep, and he was DP, and I really thought, this guy uh, deserves, you know, he was an undiscovered gem, and he's really, you know, he's amazing. And and in turn, Mark Freeborn, the you know, I've had cinematographers say, like in secret, you're only as good as what you get to shoot. And so they always cinematographers are always aligned with good production designers. And Mark Freeborn, who built Walt White's Super Lab, you know, and Breaking Bad, and um, Mark and I go back to yeah. Millennium, and he worked in everything that Jim Wong and I did up in Vancouver, and he's just he's extraordinary. And you know, he had you know um, experience with working in. Uh, location and stuff so and then th- those guys all you know they all know each other and they've all worked on each so they have a shorthand you know and uh, I'm really really very proud of the look uh, of the show can you talk about the sound a little bit too music so important oh. is it Bear McCreary oh, who's the composer can you talk oh. a little bit about that amazing what can we say we're just gonna applaud him it was such. It's it, we're we're in the editing process at the moment. We are only halfway through the season, and it is such a joy and privilege to get his his first rough cut of his. You know, it was really great for me. It was really great, but you know, they worked with him on Da Vinci's, da Vinci's Demons. Demons. But you know, of course, Walking Dead, and you in Galactica, and you're like, well, that guy's good. And when you start talking about composers, Amazing. I'm like, um, well, you work with that guy Bear, right? And they go, oh, he's. Busy. He's busy. so busy. But like, we'll give try. Him, give him a call, and we'll see. And um, you know, call him up, and he he says, uh, "You've worked extensively with Shirley Walker, who has passed away, but she was like such a you know the first female to do a the score for a major uh, motion picture uh, feature." And he had such admiration for Shirley, and, and so did, and it was like out of that that we uh, um, had this bond and then we asked him, you know, he's he often does a very large orchestral score.